Recently, following the crackdown on official corruption, China has launched another round of comprehensive anti-corruption campaigns in the healthcare sector. At least 177 hospital directors and party secretaries have been investigated, more than double from the previous year. Numerous department heads have also been scrutinized. Rumors circulating on foreign online platforms reveal a centralized list of those implicated, detailing names, dates, and titles of 168 doctors. Due to the anti-corruption announcements, several academic conferences have been postponed. Videos are circulating online of doctors expressing their remorse after being jailed. Several typical cases of corruption within the healthcare system have been exposed. A recent search on China's judicial document website using keywords such as hospital, bribes, and giving or receiving bribes resulted in over 5,500 documents, many of which depict shocking corruption within the medical field. According to court documents, the former director of Yunnan First People's Hospital, Wang Tianchao, accepted gifts of 100 apartments. In addition, he received stocks and 500,000 RMB from an individual named Wang, and a vehicle worth close to 480,000 RMB from someone named Zhang. Yang Wenjun, former party vice secretary and director of Yunnan's Pu'er People's Hospital, and Yang Wenhong, former party committee member and deputy director of the hospital, both accepted bribes from suppliers. Despite the opposition from other hospital leadership, Yang Wenjun insisted on purchasing a medical linear accelerator, a machine used in radiology, costing 35.2 million RMB, pocketing a kickback of 16 million RMB. According to reports from CNR News Changzhou on August 10th, rumors suggest that a doctor named Zhu from Changzhou No. 2 People's Hospital was investigated, with authorities uncovering assets worth 150 million RMB, including 40 million in cash, 20 properties, and 15 kilograms of gold. Due to the anti-corruption movement, hospitals have seen a significant decline in their workload. Elective surgeries are now universally declined. Patients are choosing to leave hospitals with VIP wards that were once always occupied now suddenly empty. (laughs) Apart from hospitals, pharmaceutical companies are also facing tough times. Two chairmen from the pharmaceutical industry, Fan Zhi and Zhou Wei, have been arrested due to the healthcare anti-corruption campaign. Currently, pharmaceutical staff can no longer work normally in hospitals, resulting in a significant impact on performance. Insiders have revealed that local governments in Shanghai, Wuhan, Changsha, and other places have dispatched teams to hospitals to audit accounts and conduct internal inspections. They have been questioning procurement physicians and doctors, urging them to come clean about any bribery activities. According to a netizen named Xianjing Sanren, the goal of this medical anti-corruption campaign is to tackle 2 trillion yuan worth of corruption, equivalent to the debt of real estate company Evergrande and 1.2 times that of Country Garden, a Guangdong-based property development company that suffered a liquidity crisis this year. Rumor has it that someone named Xu Bo from the Fu Wai Hospital of the Chinese Academy of Medical Sciences was involved in a case amounting to 1.2 billion yuan. In Huangshan City, a medical staff member named Shen accepted bribes totaling over 60 million yuan. Once hailed as heroes during the pandemic, some members of the medical community are now found to be corrupt and have been sent to prison. Such polarized fates are indeed perplexing. Pharmaceutical stocks plummeted following the anti-corruption storm, 
Within the six trading days following July 31, 2023, nearly 80 stocks such as Wuhan Human Well High Tech Industry Co., Salubris Pharmaceuticals, Livson Farm, and Changchun High End New Tech Industry Inc. fell by more than 10%. Apic Hope Pharmaceutical and Jiangsu Hengrei Medicine fell by over 20%. Evaporating more than 450 billion yuan in the pharmaceutical sector's market value during this period. Discussing the reasons for medical corruption, one cannot ignore the Chinese Communist Party's policy of sustaining healthcare with drug sales. The root of medical corruption can be traced back to this policy, which originated in the 1950s. Due to insufficient government investment in hospitals, hospitals had to find other means to generate revenue. To put it bluntly, doctors became salespeople. The more drugs they sold, the more profits the hospital and the doctors themselves made. In order to support themselves and their hospitals, doctors felt compelled to maximize profits from pharmaceuticals, consumables, and medical equipment. For example, in order to sell more drugs, doctors would go out of their way to sell patients drugs they didn't need, but which had high profit margins. This completely eroded doctors' professional ethics, turning them from healers into profit-driven salespeople. Li Ling, the director of a research center at Peking University, believes that, a lot of the time, drugs are used unnecessarily, ineffectively, or purely for high profit, resulting in a waste of resources. Look, we're wasting so much of our resources. Let's say one of us gets sick. In China, you've got to hop from one hospital to another. In other countries, a simple cold, you just drink water and rest at home. But here, if we told patients to just drink water for every illness, hospitals would be out of business. That's why so much gets wasted. Right now, over 40 of our medical expenses are just on medicines. Compare that with the West and other advanced countries. In the UK, for instance, their top medicines, especially those for serious diseases like cancer, are free, but here, the really life-saving cancer drugs. They have low reimbursement rates or aren't even covered, yet we spend so much on medicines that are safe, ineffective, and high profit. They're just supplemental drugs we could do without. That's the problem with our current system. We're throwing money down the drain on drugs. We don't even need... Over the years, the CCP has tried to address the issues arising from the sustaining healthcare with drug sales policy by implementing reforms such as separating hospitals and pharmacies or employing centralized procurement of drugs covered by medical insurance. However, as long as the sustaining healthcare with drug sales policy remains unchanged, no anti-corruption measures can fundamentally solve the problem. Nowadays, it has become an open secret in hospitals for patients to give red envelopes or bribes. The methods of bribing doctors are becoming increasingly sophisticated. Under the rule of the CCP, patients in hospitals cannot be sure of receiving proper treatment or even guarantee their safety during surgery. They can only try to secure normal treatment and ensure their safety by giving bribes. Despite all the reforms, there's still a breeding ground for corruption in China's medical and pharma sector. It's just become more subtle. For instance, post-reforms, hospitals aren't officially making profits from medicines anymore. But some drugs without proper checks and balances are still marked up. Companies selling these drugs offer these second-time negotiation discounts to hospitals, ensuring they still profit from drug sales. And here's the kicker. Pharma companies still find reasons to bribe medical staff. Some doctors decide which drugs to stock up on based on how big the bribe is and earn kickbacks in between. The lady in the video mentions that in addition to traditional bribes and red envelopes, medical corruption has evolved in recent years. For example, doctors' authority within medical teams is often determined by their technical titles, which are linked to research achievements. Pharmaceutical companies offer various research projects to medical staff, bribing them under the guise of research funding. The research results produced by doctors can be used to promote sales of a specific pharmaceutical product. Additionally, pharmaceutical companies organize various academic seminars and academic activities, 
offering lecture fees, service fees, travel and hospitality, and invitations to overseas academic events as a way to bribe medical personnel. Some experts have become frequent conference attendees due to this. In China's hospitals, the term centralized procurement holds a lot of weight. At its core, it represents a tug of war between pharmaceutical companies and governmental regulatory bodies. Many firms within the drug import industry, including large pharmaceutical enterprises, particularly those publicly listed, are often linked to influential political families. Delving into this matter can be truly unsettling. The Chinese Communist Party, itself at the helm of many corruption scandals, has unexpectedly initiated an anti-corruption campaign targeting the healthcare system, sparking a plethora of speculations. Logically speaking, this healthcare anti-corruption drive, which is essentially a retroactive probe spanning 20 years, doesn't directly serve the common people's interests. While it appears to curb corruption in the healthcare system, it doesn't address the fundamental issues of exorbitant medical costs and challenges in receiving medical care. The funds recovered from this anti-corruption sweep funnel back into the national treasury, with the ultimate beneficiary being the CCP itself. Hence, the speculation that the CCP is resorting to this anti-corruption campaign due to financial woes seems plausible. It's ironic that the CCP even set up an integrity account to better collect these funds, further fueling suspicions. On August 14th, Lai Jianping, lawyer, media personnel, and master graduate of international law at the China University of Political Science and Law, told the media that public concerns were justified. He said that the CCP's aggressive anti-corruption campaign in the healthcare sector is merely a continuation of its selective campaign-style approach, driven by its political agenda, not rule of law. The sudden anti-corruption movement within the medical sector by the CCP appears to be a calculated move to cast blame onto individuals within the healthcare industry, portraying the party as the champion of justice. This not only diverts attention away from the party's own issues, but also lets them earn accolades for fighting corruption. As one netizen, Tian Wang Wu Di said, This campaign isn't about helping common folks access medical care. At its core, it's a political maneuver meant for wealth redistribution and plunder. The average citizen won't benefit, and both patients and healthcare professionals are mere sacrificial pawns in this grand scheme. Because the root of corruption is systemic, both corruption and anti-corruption are tools wielded by a select few to consolidate power and divert attention. It's alarming that such a sinister regime can't be trusted to address the genuine concerns of its citizens. Instead, they may jeopardize the very living conditions of the people they're supposed to serve. As Director Lee of a top-tier hospital mentioned, this anti-corruption drive targets medical experts and scholars. Consider that it takes the state over 30 years to cultivate a single expert. With so many senior doctors, department heads, and postgraduate students being apprehended, who will tend to the medical needs of the people? If this isn't handled correctly, it might cause the entire healthcare system to collapse. If our assumptions hold true, Medical care will only become more inaccessible and costly for the common people. This anti-corruption wave has also hit some within the system hard. Typically, doctors in China have what's colloquially referred to as iron rice bowls, stable, lifelong jobs. But now, they find themselves exposed to danger. Those inside the system might think they're sailing in the same boat as the CCP, sharing privileges and luxuries. However, those who've seen the true face of the CCP know that when it comes to power and interests, the party won't hesitate to throw anyone overboard. The so-called anti-corruption drive merely scratches the surface of deeper systemic corruption. The true extent of corruption within the healthcare system under the CCP's rule will likely never be fully revealed. Privileged healthcare is an underground market that results from such corruption including special wards and priority treatments. This is something authorities avoid discussing. A particular video titled, 
A 76-year-old spent four years in ICU in Shanghai's best hospital, costing 73 million, ignited a wave of online criticism. A netizen commented, "The national medical insurance sustains him, and he in turn sustains this hospital." The CCP's relentless and dehumanizing corruption has not only eroded China's healthcare system institutionally, but has also destroyed the moral and ethical foundations of Chinese doctors. In essence, unless the root causes, corruption within the political system, are addressed and the malevolent rule of the CCP is overthrown, any anti-corruption initiative will only merely be a temporary fix, potentially causing even worse outcomes. As a user on the forum Zhuhu aptly described, trying to swat flies around a pit toilet is endless. The best solution is to replace it with a clean, modern toilet.